You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today I've got a pop quiz for you. We've got a test. Think of it more like a game show podcast where the winner gets bragging rights and the losers get to learn. So I'm going to read out the definition of, let's do this. We're going to do anatomical terminology test. The pop quiz is going to be anatomical terminology. We're going to do directions, anatomical directions, and anatomical planes of motion. So I think you'll be able to do this a little easier because I will do them in a particular order. So uh, if you get the first one, the second one's likely to, to be, I don't know, you'll probably be able to get it. But as we do this, the directional terms describe the position of structures relative to other structures in the body. And we are, and this is, listen, I'm also going to give a few additional nuggets of information. Now, that's going to be for fun, but it's also going to be for educational purposes. So you might get something that is like the, the terminology that NASM will use most likely, but that's not the only terminology out there. So if you listen to somebody else from other organizations or uh, other universities than the universities that we partner with and we pull this data from, there are different names for certain things. And so... I'm going to give you the other names just to make sure that um, maybe what you're familiar with, your knowledge gets to expand a little bit. So here we go. Directional terms. I'm going to read the, the definition and I'm going to give you just a, a breath, just a moment's break and you to try to take that moment and answer the question in your head. If I answer it before you answer it, uh, that's a whammy for you. If you answer it before I answer it, then winner, winner, chicken dinner, give yourself props. All right, here we go. Anatomical directions definition. And you can answer it with what is, and it can be total Jeopardy style. Ready? Anatomical direction that says towards the head end of the body or upper. The answer is superior. Superior is toward the head end of the body, towards the head. Another word for superior is cranial. So if you answered superior or cranial, give yourself some credit. If you answered both of them, nerd, give yourself double the amount of points. All right, cool. I bet you're going to get this one because like I said, they're in order. So this one, the definition is away from the head or lower. If something is away from the head or lower, it is considered to be inferior. Inferior, not superior towards the head, inferior away from the head. And it is not cranial. It is caudal. Caudal, C-A-U-D-A-L, caudal. Inferior or caudal means away from the head or lower. An example of that, the foot is uh, inferior to the knee, right? So that's, a, that's a, or caudal to the knee. All right, let's do another one. Um, let's say this. The anatomical term for front of the body. If you're talking about the front of the body, you are talking about uh, 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 the, ready? anterior, the anterior portion of the body. The front of the body is the anterior portion of the body. Uh, in bipedal creatures, it would be considered ventral, ventral. All right. So the front is ventral or in, in, in bipedal, in, in a quadruped animal, sorry, in a quadruped, it's ventral. Bipedal uh, anterior would be the front. All right. The back. The back of the body is going to be the what? The posterior, right? 
or also known if you are a quadruped, it would be the dorsal portion. So we've got this kind of example with the dorsal portion of the foot uh, is the top portion of the foot because our foot goes kind of long ways with the horizon, but our, our anterior and posterior do not. So we usually differentiate bipedal creatures versus quadruped creatures. Uh, anterior is ventral in one and the other, posterior and dorsal one or the other. All right, next one, next one on the list. Towards the midline of the body. Anatomical direction towards the midline of the body is considered medial. Medial is towards the midline of the body. For example, uh, in anatomical position, my pinky finger is medial to my thumb. My pinky finger in the anatomical position is medial to my thumb. Well, if it's not towards the midline of the body, it is away from the midline of the body. And the way from the midline of the body is lateral. Lateral is away from the midline of the body. So my pinky toe is lateral to my big toe. My pinky toe is lateral to my big toe. Well, <clears throat> we're going to look at something else now. <clears throat> Last two anatomical positions we're going to talk about. This one is toward the nearest, to, uh, sorry, let me rephrase, toward or nearest the trunk or the point of origin of a part. So for instance, if it is toward the trunk, it is considered to be proximal. If it's towards the trunk, it's considered to be proximal. If it is away from the trunk, or if it's a farthest point from the origin of that part, then it is going to be what? Distal. So I guess my example that I gave earlier with the foot being uh, caudal, that would really be a better example of the foot is distal, right? That the foot is distal and the knee is proximal, usually superior and inferior. And I apologize for the superior and inferior generally takes place on the trunk of the body. Um, and then proximal and distal on the appendages. All right. Those are our anatomical directions. Anatomical directions. I can give two more that I didn't put on the list here. And I think about this. Um, <clears throat> here we go. The anatomical direction. See if you can answer this. Um, this is like the layers of muscle. If a layer of muscle is farther down into the body, it is considered to be what? A muscle layer is farther down into the body than other layers of muscle. It is considered to be deep. But if that layer of muscle is closer to the skin, it is not deep. It is considered to be what? superficial, just like fill in the blank, because y'all know them people. Superficial, shallow, not deep. All right. That's it. That's it for planes of motion. Let's quiz up now. On, I'm sorry. That's it for anatomical directions. Let's quiz up on planes of motion. And you've all seen <clears throat> this planes of motion diagram. And the planes of motion diagram, you've got somebody, a uh, uh, a figure, a human figure standing in anatomical position. And anatomical position is uh, in an upright position with palms facing forward. That's anatomical position. And then you see these planes of motion dissecting the body. You see a plane of motion going front to back, a plane of motion dissecting the body from side to side, and a plane of motion uh, dissecting the body from, uh, you know, the waist. Uh, and it's, it's a... Uh, and, and, and that's where it dissects through the body. But here's the thing. You can look at this photo uh, or these figures. And if you don't already know the answers, it doesn't make sense. Just seeing that figure, it I think it's helped uh, the absolute number of times that I've seen them in textbooks. And I've seen them in hundreds of textbooks. And it's helped zero number of people unless you already know and understand it. So part of this pop quiz is to help you know and understand better. So we're going to talk about planes of motion. The first plane of motion. Here's the pop quiz. Ready? 
first plane of motion is a vertical plane that runs from side to side. It divides the body into anterior and posterior portions. A vertical plane that runs from side to side, dividing the body into front and back or anterior and posterior is considered to be the frontal plane. The frontal plane. Extra credit if you know another name for this plane of motion. The other name is coronal plane. The frontal and coronal planes are the same thing. Now, there is a coronal suture that goes across the top of the skull. That coronal suture divides the, really, that's a line that if you did a plane through it, divides the body from side to side between the front and the back portions. If you wanted to see the front of my brain in a dissection, you would have to do a frontal dissection, which means cutting from side to side so you can pop it off and look straight ahead at it so you have a frontal view. <clears throat> frontal movement is movement that is side to side. And now let's give another little portion of a quiz. This is like extra credit. What axis of rotation, what anatomical axis does the frontal or coronal plane move about? It moves about the anterior posterior axis, also known as the sagittal horizontal axis. Rick, stop talking. It's too much. Too much. Well, if you already know, then you get extra credit. And if these things were something that you weren't familiar with, I'm happy that it's able to inform you a little bit. So the frontal and coronal plane moves about the anterior posterior axis or the sagittal horizontal axis. All right. Next plane of motion. Quiz. Quiz time. Pop quiz. Here we go. <clears throat> there is a vertical plane that runs from front to back, and it divides the body into right and left portions. It is a vertical plane. It runs from front to back, dividing to the left and right sides. This is known as the sagittal plane. The sagittal plane. Sometimes also, in some places, referred to the lateral plane. All right. Now... Here's another little extra credit portion. <clears throat> what axis of rotation does the sagittal plane move about? All right, sagittal moves about the mediolateral axis or the frontal horizontal axis. A lot of data there. And then we got one more plane. Well, actually, we're going to give you two more planes of motion. <clears throat> Let's do this one back to back because we've been doing them in order. So we just did sagittal plane. This is the sagittal plane that goes through the midline of the body. So it's not just right and left sides because um, the right and left sides could be, you know, three quarters of my side this way, not down the middle. In the middle of the sagittal plane, it is known as, and it divides the equally right and left halves, it is known as the median plane, or the one I use mostly, mid-sagittal plane, the mid-sagittal plane. So it is the middle line dividing the body through the sagittal plane into left and right portions. And there's one more plane of motion. I'm sure you already figured it out. If you know that there are only a few planes of motion, and it divides the body or any of its parts <clears throat> into upper and lower portions. And if it divides the body into upper and lower parts, that plane is going to be horizontal. It is the horizontal plane, also known as the transverse plane. Also known as, ooh, the axial plane. Horizontal, transverse, axial, all the same thing. That's your plane of motion. And it moves about the vertical axis or the longitudinal axis. All right, quiz show. 
uh, game show, pop quiz. How'd you do? How'd you do? I know some of you did really well. I know that if I was put on the spot and I only had a second to answer that, like I'm giving you, I don't know if I would have been able to get all of those. Um, so, I mean, I get, I get the cheat sheet. I'm the teacher. <laughs> Y'all, this is fun for me. I like doing the, the anatomical directions. I like doing the planes of motion and movement, flexion, extension, all that kind of stuff. I really enjoy it. Um, does it make you a better trainer? No. Does it make you a smarter trainer? Yes. Yeah, smarter in the sense that you know the language that we're talking about. Uh, but it really does clarify some things when you understand movement and you balance out planes of motion, you can balance out joint actions, you can give direction, which is more than saying, um, you know, when, when I, when you're pointing out movement, you can't just say to the side, because even though you might immediately think that that's lateral, then things are side to side. And one of those sides is medial and the other side is lateral. It's moving medial in one way. So you almost have to say, go to the side and bring it back if you wanted to say medial, but you learn the language and it's medial. So when you talk about medial rotation and lateral rotation and where are you weak and where are you strong, then you have to have the language around that. And that's why we learn it the way that we learn it. That's why there's uh, a jargon that goes along with what it is that we do. So with that said, thanks for listening. I hope you did well in the quiz. And if you did not, listen to the episode again. Take it back and, and feel more confident learning the information. Thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family. And feel free on whatever platform you're on to leave a five-star review. If you've got questions for me, you can hit me up at dr dot rick Ritchie on instagram or threads or you can email me rick dot Ritchie at nasm.org keep inspiring people to fitness thanks for listening this has been the nasm cpt podcast